Hi everybody. Welcome to Grab a Cup of Knit and Chat. Today is September the 4th, 2023. This is my second attempt at doing this video, so hopefully I can get through the whole thing. Um, so yeah, welcome to my little corner of YouTube where I talk all things knitting, fiber, spinning, crochet, crochet, cross stitch, blah, blah, blah. If I can talk, I will talk to you about all that stuff because quite honestly, my husband doesn't want to hear it. You probably hear my fan running. Sorry, but I need to have it in here. Um, it's a little bit warm here in the Willamette Valley of Oregon. Uh, I rained earlier today for just a little bit and then it was nice and then it heated up and now it looks like it's cloudy again so who knows but sit tight grab some knitting grab a cup of whatever or something cold today I'm having my cherry 7 up 0 not sponsored just yeah there you go so what I'm knitting on while we're chatting today is we'll just start with what I'm working on the muscle barrel hat have no idea what color yarn this is it's fingering weight um, I'm pretty sure that it came in a knit crate box back when I was getting knit crate every month there's my crown um, It's been floating around in my little bag for quite a while. I'm just kind of working on it here and there. Um, I only have one finished object, so I'll show that to you before I start knitting. It's a pair of socks. It's the weekend socks. Um, Weekend Shorty Socks by Summer Lee Design Company, and I knitted the size medium. So, you see the end here. I left longer ends whenever I wove them in because I wasn't sure on the blocking. So, they've been washed and they've been blocked. So, now I can go back and take those. Um, I've read that some people leave the longer ends so that after it's blocked, once it's pulled out by the blocking or blooms from the blocking, some of it will go away and then they go in and snip. But these are done in Chopelle Zauber Perlin. I probably butchered that name, but it's little balls of yarn. It's a hundred grams. They come in 14 grams a piece. Um, it starts with the yellow and then each color after that has a little bit of this pink in it. So it starts with yellow, ends with the pink. So the pink is mixed with yellow here, just a little bit and here and here. And then it's more pink than yellow, still more pink than yellow, and then it gets down to the pink. This orange piece and the red piece right here is Earth Yarns in Harmony. I knit a pair of socks in a, the Harmony rainbow color for one of my kids, and that was the scraps. And in, I wanted to do this, but... The weekend socks that they had was white. So this yellow here, this brighter yellow right there that mixes into the orange and then into the red, that's what I had left over from that other pair of socks right here. And they turned out gorgeous. I love them. I just love them. So that's my finished object. The next thing I have is I'm working on the pebble tunic before um, I show you. I've shown you before and I haven't gotten very much done. But where is my, oh, it helps if I hold it up right. 
I have a progress keeper. This is where I was last episode. This is where I am now. Uh, got to do the pockets. I'm finishing it off. This is an acrylic yarn. And I showed before how it blocked color from the top to the middle. These are all one dye lot. And I don't understand it. This was a partial skein up here in the darker color, which I like that color really good. And then I had to add on. So the way it blocked here, I was like, oh, I'm not too worried about it. It's kind of cool. It looks intentional the way it did it because it's front and back. But down here, I started with the new skein and halfway through it goes into that color block again. This is how much of that skein I have left. So I don't know how it's going to do. So I don't know. I may wind up having to over dye it with some RIT dye because this is acrylic yarn. Um, but I don't know. I'm going to finish it first. It's just the only thing I'm doing to the pattern is it says that from where the underarm stops. And I know it hangs down a little bit to do 19 and three quarter inches. Well, mine right now is like at 21 because when I tried it on and I was just maybe an inch or so away, that was gonna fall right in the middle of my hips. Not in the middle of my hips. It was gonna fall in the middle of my midsection, which is the largest part of my body. And I wanted it past that. I really don't want anything to stop right around my belly or the top of my hips. Um, I'm a little self-conscious with that. So that's why I'm doing it longer. I started that as part of the Mayak Hohi Locatelli, the Mayak Hohi Locatelli and the Needles at the Ready. Um, knit along. Uh, I think that goes until the end of this month so hopefully I can get it done. Um, I think I said today was September 4th but starting September 1st um, Hohe's Fall Cow uh, 2023 started and I would like to do the Trum Trumso hat, the lightweight hipster, and the sparkle cardigan for that. Um, I think I'm going to do, I know I'm going to do the hat and the lightweight hipster. I'm not too worried about whether I get that sparkle cardigan done during the knit along. It just kind of depends. Those are three patterns that I had of hers other than the pebble tunic and the marble, is it marble mount sweater? I have it written down. Marble Mount Pullover that I wanted to do. So I'm e either way, I, I'm just having fun knitting them. Um, the other thing that I'm doing right now is the Cozy Days Daisy Blanket by, um, Stephanie, Jessica, Lau are all about Amy. And again, I started with stash yarn and I had to go get more. Um, but this is my, my block. This is sage, ivory, and blush. These aren't blocked yet. And I've got about 14 out of, I don't know, 49 done. It's just something that I'm working on. That is crochet. Um, all of the patterns that I've mentioned so far and that I am mentioning are all on Ravelry. I'm not a real big, ra I get patterns from Ravelry. I use it for that. I look up patterns. I look at things. 
but my project page type thing is not great. So I'm thinking about making a project page for grab a cup of knit and chat just so that I can put patterns and bundles by date of things that I talk about, but I'm not quite sure if I'm going to do that yet. Excuse me. Now, the other thing that I'm working on, which I have tons of things on the needles and it's driving me crazy, but this is how much I have started of the coffee talk socks. That's it. Um, I just dropped one of my needle stoppers. I'll have to find it later. I love my little stitch stoppers, but when you're using a size one, and sometimes they're just a little bit loose. But anyway, that's by Tracy Miller, also on Ravelry. Um, if you don't know Tracy Miller, sorry, I'll stop looking for it. If you don't know Tracy Miller, she's one of the grocery girls on YouTube. Um, her and her sister Jody, which is Frankie Fibers. Frank, I can't remember. Um, anyway, Frankie Gray Fibers, I think is what it is. I, I'm so sorry. I'm butchering it. Love their YouTube channel. Love that pattern. Um, let's see, what else am I doing? I think that's all I'm actively working on. The muscle burl, the socks, the pebble tunic, and that blanket. I have scrappy yarn blankets going. I have a northeasterly um, scrappy blanket, which is also on Ravelry. Uh, going, I have a miter square blanket that I talked about, I think. I talked about both of these last time or in, in past videos, the last two videos, I've talked about the Northeasterly, the Beekeeper's Quilt, the Miter Square Blanket, and the Battenberg Blanket that I all have going um, with scrappy yarns. And another one that I want to do is, um, it's actually called... The Domino Star Stash Buster Afghan by Anita Gran. And I have a picture here. If I can blow it up a little bit. Hopefully you can see that. There's tremendous colors in this it starts in the middle kind of like the Russell Burrow had it look like and then it goes out from there that's another scrappy blanket that I was thinking about um, when you look at it on Ravelry there's gorgeous pictures of people who did coordinated colors and I'm kind of, I haven't started it. I mean, I've got four, four scrappy blanket. Well, five now. I'll talk about the other one in a minute. I think it's five scrappy type blankets going at one time right now. And I'm finding it a little hard to keep up with everything. Not something else that I'll talk about. Um, the other one that I've got that I just started is the Sweet Shop Blanket by Laura Penrose. I have one block done. It's a DK weight blanket, and I actually have a lot of this Mandala from Lion Brand um, in my stash. I have loads of it. So what I did is I started on the outside of one, and I did the first square, and the one that I'm doing, this is not the same colors. 
I wish I had one the same colors right here, but I don't. Anyway, it has like a, a bluish color and then it goes into a purple. And the outside, there was maybe about that much of the square that's done in the blue and then it fades into the, or it goes into the purple. And then I'm using a plain white uh, for the other half of the square. So I'm going to use the fade and I'm going to work out. This is a paid for pattern, so I don't want to give too much away. But it, um, half of the square is a contrasting color. The other half is whatever solid color that you want or a main color. And the way that I'm going to do it is I'm going to try to, I started in this corner and then I'm going to try to let it go back and forth in its own little color fade um, and see how that looks. I don't know. I may need to deconstruct the, the cakes and just do separate colors because I have a couple of cakes of each color and see how that works. But you know, it's blankets to take camping or what have you because the mandala yarn is um, completely washable and dryable because it's 100% acrylic and I think the white that I'm using is Bernay Baby which is also a size 3 yarn like the Mandala for a solid white color to go with it and you know I'm just trying to look for something to take to the beach or to the mountains or whatever that's nice and warm and easy and I can give to the kids for the grandkids that's washable that kind of thing um what else did I want to talk about the season sweater by Ozetta Haley Smedley it's a worsted and a weight and a lace yarn held together I would like to make one of those um but I'm not quite sure because I work in an office. I have a fan going on me now and I'm at home in the craft room. I'm always hot and I'm wondering, do I really want to make long sleeve sweaters? I have one that I made that's like, I think in a pumpkin color, uh, the Calliope, I think is what it's called. Um, and I've worn that to the office and it was a little bit warm. I have a fan at my desk and the air goes in the summer and the heat goes in the winter and nobody is ever comfortable. And when everybody's hollering, it's cold, I'm comfortable. So I'm not sure if long sleeve sweaters would be good for me right now. I think I would rather start making short sleeve sweaters um, are like t-shirts. Um, I was watching the grocery girls one day and they were like, any sweater pattern that you like, just make short sleeve if you don't want a long sleeve. But I need to do some research because I'm not sure. Do you have to do, do you start it and then just do the decreases until you get to the length that you want and then put the cuff? Do you have to do extra decreases? I need to look into that. Um, another thing that I'm doing right now is the tessellated sweater by Andrea Mowry. And I did not bring that in here because I'm not really sure if I want to continue doing it. Um, I got that ribbing done. I've never done a tubular cast on before that sweater um it's not the sweater i i want that sweater i don't like wearing vest i don't mind wearing a tank top as you can see but i don't like wearing vest and i don't want the long sleeve Maybe I should give her a, a message and send her a message and see uh, how she would go about doing that in a short sleeve. 
I'm thinking more cardigans in my life because I've got yarn that I want to do the Eva cardigan by, I'm going to butcher this name, Kasha Urelli Fredrickson. That's also on Ravelry. And the Sparkle Cardigan by Hohi Locatelli. I'm, I'm thinking the short sleeves with the cardigans, excuse me, would be a better fit for me than long sleeve because I'm always hot. The minute I get home from work, I go upstairs and I change from whatever I'm wearing and put on tank top and shorts and get cool. So there you go. Um, what else? I've just kind of rambled really fast. Um, the other thing that I'm thinking about is I have a lot of whips. I, uh, have things that I've been working on that aren't as enjoyable anymore. Um, like I did the, I hate to call them out, but the mystery sock along for West Knits this summer, that was my very first mystery knit along at all. Um, I enjoyed doing it. I kept up with it up until the last, um, the last clue I was doing my socks in tandem, so when Clue 1 came out, I did the right sock, and then I picked up another set of needles and did the left sock, Clue 1, and I did that up until Clue 3, and I got halfway through Clue 3 on the right sock, and Clue 4 came out, and it was the end of it and I was looking at the socks and I just I didn't enjoy doing them anymore um mostly because I was like oh it's a west knit pattern and he is all into the bright colors and I'm gonna do him some good and I'm gonna use bright colors and this is gonna be so out of my box and so wonderful and I didn't like the colors. I liked the variegated color that I used, but the solid color was a very bright lime green. So someone else was talking the other day on YouTube about um, frogging their whips. If they don't bring you joy, just get rid of them. Frog them, find something to do with that yarn, and find something that's going to make you happy. So I'm frogging those socks and I have some grandchildren that would just love that bright green, I'm sure. Um, and the variegated would just be awesome. And I'm thinking sock head slouch hats and socks for the grandkids. Another thing is... I made a list the other day I was going through when I was looking at all these whips and I was like, why is it I keep getting, and everybody talks about it, but I keep getting the, um, the cast on jitters or excitement thing going on where I see all of these patterns and I want them all. Um, I love the one YouTube channel, um, West Maven, knit all the things. That's exactly how I feel. I want to knit all the things. Um, and I get so excited and I pick them up and I'm like, oh my gosh. My very first muscle burl hat was a skein of knit crate um, yarn that I had gotten, but it was super wash and I did it and I didn't, I don't know. It was just, I still haven't washed and blocked it yet. Um, but we'll see. It's great because it's really thick. Um, it's a thicker, 
it feels like a thicker fingering weight yarn than what this is. Um, and it it's a sock yarn, but it just has a different composition. I noticed that with another yarn that I picked up the other day, I was starting the, um, oh, I'm rambling. Sorry. I started the Sweet Shop Blanket. And I started it off with one DK weight yarn that's really pretty that I like that I had in my stash. And I did it and I was like, oh my gosh, this just does not, I don't know, it's just not right. And it's thick and round. And I'm like, oh. And that's the same thing with that muscle burrow hat that I did. It's just it's where this is thin sock yarn um these are real thick and rounded yarn it almost feels like two or three of these and those are supposed to be the the sock yarn it, i mean it's supposed to be a size one sock yarn um the one that i started the sweet shop with is supposed to be a size three but it's just all round and it feels more like a worsted weight but that yarn's gonna wind up a hat sorry um probably a baker's hat or something anyway i just i thought that was just kind of weird i got it because it was pretty i didn't pay attention to it i pick it up and i get the sweet shop is done from one corner to the other and I got almost to the halfway point I had as many stitches excuse me as many stitches as I was supposed to have on my needle at that point but it was like a huge it just looked huge for half a square compared to what hers did and then I went to go add the white to it, which was a size three yarn. And it was like double that. So I took it out, obviously, and I'm using the mandala. But this is the size three yarn that I have. And it matches with the Bernay white that I'm using. And it's like putting two of these together was that other one. And it was just, it was way too thick. Anyhow, so that's what I'm working on. Um, taking those apart, but I have all of these scrappy blankets and the pebble tunic and the cozy days blanket and the uh, coffee talk socks and now I want to do the hipster and the tromso and I've got the muscle barrel hat um, I had to stop and think for a minute so I took a um, well actually this book here I I have my notes for today in here but I did did I do it in this one? I may have done it in another one that I'm using. But I took and I listed all of my projects that I want to get done right off the bat. Um, like my pebble tunic, my cozy days blanket, my bustle burl hat, my coffee talk socks. So I wrote pebbles tunic, pebble tunic five rounds in ink and then under that coffee talk socks one pattern repeat um muscle burl five rounds um cozy days blanket two to four squares that's what i want to work on every day i have a couple of other projects on there like some mittens that i'm working on for my husband and what else I, one or two other things 
I um, I'm making him a pair of fire pit mitts from um, Taylor Earl from Wool Needles and Hands uh, podcast, and he wants fingers. The fire pit mitts stop right here, and he wants his to go up into fingers. So I'm trying to um, make fingers on his mitts. So I've got those on my list, and um, I've got like two to three rounds written on there because I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do that right now, but I'm going to figure it out. Um, so over the last couple of days, when I've sat down to knit, like I'm knitting here, while I'm talking, I... Um, I'll mark in my book that every round that I've done and when I get five rounds of my muscle burl hat done then I'll put it away and I'll pick up my pebble tunic and I'll do five rounds on it and then I'll put it down and pick up my coffee talk socks and then I'll do a pattern repeat um, so far that's working pretty good so I'm um, I'm splitting up my knitting time on all of my projects so that maybe I can get something done. And some people find that kind of weird. Some people are like, just work on one project, uh, or do 30 minutes a day. Well, I've timed it out that the pebble tunic is the largest item that I'm working on right now. And to do five rounds of that at this moment takes about 30 minutes. So what I'm doing is basically 30 minutes on each project a day. And hopefully I can get something done. I may, I may change that to where all the knitting that I do today is on the Muscle Burl hat. All the knitting that I do tomorrow will be on the tunic. All the knitting I do on Wednesday could be on the coffee talk socks. Thursday could be my cozy days blanket, that kind of thing. I don't know. I, I'm one of those people that I get bored a little easier. So... By working on the different projects, I can get them done and I don't get so bored. I think that might be what happened with the sock along is I was trying to keep up with those socks. Um, I was kind of pushing myself. I picked colors that I don't usually use and I... I didn't find it fun by the end of it. And I should have just taken my time, uh, done colors that I knew and enjoy already instead of trying to do something different. And I think I would have enjoyed them more. So I might go back and make them with colors that I know that I like. And speaking of colors... Today, I was able to join a group of people that have a spinning and knitting group that I would go to normally, but it's on Mondays, and um, I work Monday through Friday, so I can't go to their group. But on Memorial Day and Labor Day, since the holidays fall on Mondays, and they can't go where they usually have their group at. They meet at one lady's home and they have a dye day. So I took my DK weight uh, yarn, bare yarn that I had, and four skeins of some fingering bare yarn. Today was my first day going to the dye day. I took all of that and I dyed yarn today. So the Eva cardigan, I was thinking about making like a, 
I had enough yarn in the bare yarn, so I wanted to dye that yarn so that I could use it for the Eva cardigan. Because my stash, although I have a very large stash, is a lot of one or two skeins of this or three skeins of that or what have you. And I'm a large person. I have a large bust. So most of the patterns that I make are like a 3X uh, to accommodate for that. So I need lots of yardage and I happen to have enough yardage in bare yarn so I wound up dyeing that a lilac color and I did the fingering weight. I did a salmon color, but I did the twist to get the resist. So there's some white in there and I'm not sure yet. I want to see what it looks like whenever it dries. I may want to go back and add a different color just on the white because two skeins I left alone with the salmon and the white resist and two skeins I dyed over with vermilion color so it was dyed salmon in the twist and then it was dyed vermilion untwisted and it's a, a red <laughs> Um, with some pink hues to it is what it is and it's pretty but it's not really the colors that I would choose but you know what making some sock head slouch hats or uh, muscle burrow hats out of it with the different colors I think is gonna make it actually kind of pretty and I may just do it for that um, I don't always have to make something that I like. I can do something out of the ordinary. And the lilac for the, um, the sweater, um, I love the color. I'm not so sure about wearing it in a garment, but it's a cardigan. So it can be that I'm going to go ahead and do it um, and get some cute little buttons for it because I need five to eight buttons, um, 15 millimeter buttons, um, and I think some fun buttons and it could be... it could be that staple piece. It could be that piece that I wear over a white uh, sleeveless top or a blank sleeveless a uh, blank a black sleeveless top and put that over it to give it that pop of color and I think I'm gonna like it I'm not so sure but I think I'm gonna like it we'll see um, it's tonal it's very tonal and it's nice so it's got darker spots it's got lighter spots I dyed all the skeins at once the one thing that I did was I put the first couple of skeins in I should have waited a minute because you can tell the skeins that were on the bottom have some white spots not light but white so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the uh, the other skeins uh, first in the sweater. And if I have to use those with some of the white, then I can. Um, but if I don't, I'm going to try to speckle that part or give it a little coating of a lilac on there and uh, then I can see um, if I don't have to use it I may over dye it with some more lilac 
um, just to give the white that light color and the part that's already dyed will be even darker which would be pretty or I could just like heavily speckle that area or something like that and I could probably make some uh, mitts or a pair of mitts and a hat to match the cardigan I don't know I'll have to see we'll see how much it uses it's gonna be another out of the box for me so if I know that if I get part of the way into the cardigan and I'm really not filling the colors I don't have to continue with the colors um, I'm kind of newer to dyeing, so I've done dyeing in the past. I'm not brand new. I have done some in the past, but it's been mostly like Kool-Aid dyeing. I've done very little acid dyeing. So everything that I did was like one skein of this or two skeins of that. I do have some salmon color that I've dyed before, but it's not as bright as the one that I did today. But the whole point was, is I was actually able to be around other like-minded people. So, let's see, what else has been going on? Um, I put up tomatoes over the weekend, so I canned whole tomatoes. Uh, I've just been working pretty much, coming home eating dinner, knitting, and going to bed. There's not a whole lot going on. There is a fiber festival in Albany, Oregon, I think the third weekend of this month. I thought it was next month, but I found out today that it's this month. Uh, plan on going to that. Um, and there's another one starting in Portland, Oregon in November. November. I think this is the first year and I think it's the sacred sheep um, let's see if I can find it so Oregon flock and festival um, I think it's flock and fiber I thought it was going to be next month, but they're saying that it's this month. Maybe I've got the wrong one. Let's see. I should have looked this up before. November 4th, Sacred Sheep, they're on Instagram as the Sacred Sheep, um, from the Sacred Sheep team, let's see, there you go, but Sacred Sheep, November 4th in Portland, I plan on going to that one. It says it's a new event, so if I'm pretty sure, and it's going to be at the red, so I'm going to try to go to that one. November's my birthday month, so that would be awesome. I did not go to the Flock and Fiber in Seattle last month. Um or July or whenever that was I really wanted to because we lived just just north of Seattle up until last year when we moved to Oregon and it was the very first one and I was thinking of course they would wait until I moved to have it um, but I 
I really didn't feel like driving six hours and then going to that and then having to drive back six hours and I would have if I could have stayed the night but it just wasn't in the cards this year next year I want to plan on going to that one and um, then I'll plan on going to the Portland one again Portland's not too far away from where I'm at that I can't um, it's like an hour and a half maybe that long but it's pretty much a straight shot um, it's not too far that I can't do it in a day so that's awesome let's see what have I been doing um, other than putting things away going through my stuff I really do need to get rid of a lot of stuff here in this craft room I mean you can see this mess back by here behind me that's my ironing board oh and I got a styrofoam head you can see it over my shoulder at a thrift store the other day so that now whenever I make hats and I go to block them I can just stick them on that head to dry I don't care that it has a face but I plan on just sticking it over I was doing the balloon thing um, making the hats and then sticking them while they were wet on a balloon but I honestly got the wrong balloons I'm allergic to latex and every time I would use the balloons it would be awful so I stopped doing that uh, what else is there um, junk journal making I have a couple of junk journals that I need to make and watching TV lately has just been I don't know I mean, I know there's a strike and there's not really anything new, but Outlander is over for this season. Um, I'm waiting on The Mandalorian to start back up, The Last of Us. There's got to be more of those. There's got to be more of Obi-Wan um, Kenobi on Disney. You guys really need to come on with that. You should have had the new seasons already filmed and ready to come out. <laughs> um, I support those that are on strike. I, I think you deserve whatever it is you think you deserve. Um, I'm not trying to bad mouth you. I just am ready for new shows. Other than that, I started a job. Um, I not really started a job. I had the job with where I'm working at right now, but I started a position in which I had to change offices. And now instead of driving 15 minutes to work every day, I drive 45 minutes one way. So, I um, have been listening to lots of books. Um, I just finished, I, I do the audio books um, on Libby through my library. So, I'm borrowing the books from the library, which is really nice. Uh, let's see. I just finished... Uh, is it fourth wing? I'm looking for it on my, yes, fourth wing by Rebecca Yaros, right there. It's good. It is good. It, I don't know exactly what I expected, but toward the end are some hot bits. I could have done without that. Um, 
but that's I mean it's a good book and the second one from what I understand is supposed to be coming out in November I can't wait um, the other thing that I've listened to is the Dark Water Daughter by H.M. Long. I'm not exactly sure what I what I expected out of that, but it was was pretty good. I, I was surprised. Um, and then the other one that I've listened to is um, not that one. Um, the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Susan Collins. And that's the... Uh, I guess you could say the backstory for President Snow from the Hunger Games. All I can say about that one is, is there's got to be another one that continues his story. Um, not, not sure what I expected with it. Um, it was okay, but it didn't keep my interest as much as I thought it might. Um, Dark Water Daughter, the same. It, I, it kept my interest more than the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. It was one of those things like, what's going to happen now? I, I really enjoyed it. Um, it's kind of a fantasy type, and it's one of those things where, yes, finally. And the fourth wing is fantasy as well, and it has dragons in it and the whole nine yards, but I really enjoyed it. Um, can't wait for the next one. I'm hoping there's a second book to The Dark Water's Daughter. Uh, coming to I really liked those two um, yeah and the other one the songbirds and snakes um, it was interesting but at the same time I'm not sure that it was as insightful as I thought it would be. It was very insightful to get the backstory of President Snow and I don't know, I guess I I thought it was gonna be more. Um, I, for some reason, thought that it was going to be more of a, when it ended, you would understand exactly why he is the way he is but it in my opinion it left me lacking that information I understand how he started getting to where he is but not it, it's almost like it's not the full story it's like I'm hanging there so I don't know that's my thoughts um I'm glad you joined me. If you feel like it, hit the thumbs up, leave a comment, um, subscribe. This is just a quick little um, talk net, carry on, and we'll see how it goes from here. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.